Welcome to your weekly UAS news update. This is the week of April 26, 2021. This week I got four topics. We have a new mini drone. It's not a DJI mini, it's actually a competitor and it's from Hubsun, uh, it's the Zeno Mini Pro. So we're gonna be talking about this. We wanna talk about a NOAA testing drone that's gonna go straight into hurricanes. Really, really cool technology. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll talk about how, what that looks like and kind of what it does. Uh, something not so cool is the drone toll road concept. There's four different states in the US right now that are trying to monetize from drone pilots by creating drone toll roads. So we'll talk about that. I wish I wish we didn't, quite frankly, but that's part of it. And then lastly, we have a really cool wing copter uh, design that can drop packages in three different locations. And we'll talk about kind of the, the design behind this. So let's get to it. First thing this week is Hubson. Hubson creates a variety of different drones, typically on the cheaper side of things. Uh, and they're coming up with a mini DJI mini killer, if you want to call it this. Uh, the, the drone is at 249 grams, 40 minutes of flight time, which is huge, uh, which is about 10 minutes more actually than the, the Mavic mini has. Uh, 48 megapixel on a one over 1.3 inch uh, CMOS sensor. So that's a pretty, pretty small sensor right there. Records photos in JPEG. We have the ability to do 4K at 30 frame per second. The bit rate is between 100 and 200 uh, megabit per second. I couldn't find exactly what um, what recording was getting what kind of bit rate, but even at 100, it's still a pretty decent image. Uh, HDR and also the ability to do six times zoom. So this is a direct competitor to, like we said, the DJI Mini series, but also to something that was released not too long ago from Fimi. Fimi has the uh, Fimi X8 Mini. Everybody's calling their thing Mini, I guess, uh, to compete with DJI. And it'll be interesting to see the battle between all of these. Uh, couldn't find any pricing, couldn't find any uh, release date on their website but you can go down there. You can see an article uh, from our friends at Drone Excel. Uh, go take a look and tell us what you think. Uh, is this something that you're gonna get, something that you're interested in? Uh, definitely wanna get my hands on maybe both of these to compare them to the Mini. Uh, it's a, it's a, a, a target of the market that I think is uh, pretty important because that's, to me, that's the entry level drone that people should be getting into rather than going with the very, very cheap drones. This is the, this is the one drone that I typically recommend people get. If they're getting started, they're not sure. So I wanna see what this thing actually does. The next thing is a really cool drone from NOAA. NOAA is doing, well, as you know, a lot of research about the weather in itself. And uh, so far they've been sending actual manned aircraft inside of uh, hurricanes. Actually, a friend of mine from college uh, flew one of these uh, aircraft for a while uh, flying inside of those hurricanes or hurricane hunter, that's what we call them. Now they're trying to send, it's called a tube drone. It's uh, It really looks like a tube with a bunch of wings. And this is a one-time drone. This is a, a one flight, basically flies inside of the hurricane, collects data, and then basically uh, disintegrates. I, I'm not sure what happens to it. I'm sure it just becomes debris eventually. Uh, but this thing can fly for four hours, uh, a range of 276 miles. So quite a bit of distance and uh, quite a bit safer, quite frankly, than sending a, 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 a manned aircraft inside of a hurricane. It's got a bunch of sensors, collects the data, I'm guessing sends it back directly to the station. Uh, it's a 25 pound drone. So really interesting. You can see the pictures going on in the background. Uh, tell me what you think. Tell me what you think about the technology of a one use type of aircraft. Next thing, not so fun. Uh, we've talked about this in the past and, uh, and unfortunately we have to talk about it again. There's four different states in the country right now that are trying to put um, what we can only define as toll roads in the sky for drone flights. And, um, and, and they're using a term called uh, avigation. And uh, we have avigation laws in New York City. You may be familiar with this. And now they're trying to get these avigation laws across the country. Why is it bad? Well, it's bad because they're wanting to divide the airspace and basically make it a toll road. So the owner of the land would have the ability to charge someone for using the airspace above the land. There's a lot of issues behind this. Not only the fact that this would create a nightmare of local regulation, piecemeal local regulation that pilots would have to become aware of before they can fly. The target is obviously drone deliveries. They want these drone delivery, uh, these delivery drones to uh, be paying a toll so that they can use 
airspace, which belongs to really no one, definitely does not belong to the landowner at this stage. So I'm sure there will be a lot of pushback from uh, probably from the FAA, but also from our community. So um, this is a question we're meeting with Vic this week in our Pixel Drone Show. And this is a question I'm going to bring to Vic from the DSPA, Vic Moss, uh, because we uh, I know they've been involved with trying to fight some of these with Senator Lee in Utah and other places. So the four states are uh, Louisiana, Mississippi, Texas and West Virginia. And uh, we're going to see what comes out of this. Nothing good for drone operators, I can tell you that. So uh, the bill, I'm going to put the bill in the description, the bills, I should say, with an S in the description. So you can go and take a look. If you live in one of these states, then make sure that you go and talk to the people that are in charge of the bills and uh, and make them stop from, uh, well, going into craziness. It's crazy enough as it is to figure out what the airspace is and then what the actual landowner rules are. We don't need any more complexity for flying drones. Last topic this week is the Wing Copter 198. And this is a really cool design. Uh, it's a VTOL aircraft, vertical takeoff and landing aircraft, and it has tilt rotors. And it basically has the ability to be fully autonomous to make uh, drone deliveries. And um, the, the one of the things that I found really interesting watching the video is the fact that Wing Copter is advertising that one person on the ground can supervise 10 of these uh, wing capture drones at the same time, I'm guessing in different phases of flight. These are, these are fully autonomous flights, but uh, they're having a person on the ground basically oversee what is going on. And, uh, and I was t telling Jason earlier in the office, uh, this is something that I've been predicting for quite a long time for the main aviation side. And this is something that people don't want to hear typically because it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a change and people don't like change. But um, my prediction has been for a long time that you know, we were at three people per aircraft, three crew in an aircraft, and we're down to two crews right now. Eventually, we'll have one pilot flying an aircraft, and I'm talking about commercial airplanes here. And then down the road, what we'll have is we'll have one person flying the aircraft from the ground, and this is where it become kind of controversial. And then eventually, I can foresee exactly what uh, Wingcopter is doing here, which is one person on the ground uh, supervising five, ten different aircraft flying up in the air and just being there as a as a person to react in case something happens. Now, we're not there yet. I, I, I'm, I'm sure that I will see it within my lifetime if I get to be old enough to see this. Um, it, it will happen. And it's only a generational thing. And, and, and the fact that we have UAS doing this um, is, uh, is only going to be a, a test and, and is going to be bringing a lot of data that we can apply to the manned aircraft world eventually. So uh, we'll see. Uh, this drone is designed to carry three packages. The payload is 13 pounds and 47 miles of range. So uh, obviously the payload is going to be pretty small. If you have three packages, it divides it, you know, 13 pounds by three. That's about four and some uh, pounds for each of them. And uh, and yeah, that's really it. So you can see the videos playing of this aircraft in the background. Uh, tell me what you think about these drone deliveries that are going to be pretty much fully autonomous. Uh, I don't like it in a sense because this is not creating any jobs for the pilot. Uh, it will be interesting to see what kind of jobs get created on the ground to maintain these, to support them, to bring the packages to them. What kind of packages are we going to be sending? Uh, how is the airspace going to get busier and busier because of this type of operation? So uh, a lot of questions are unanswered, but uh, we're at... Uh, I always tell people we're at week number one of uh, where the UAS industry is going. We're at the, the very, very infancy at the moment. So it'll be interesting. That's all I have. Um, Pixel Drone Show. We have a really cool episode that we posted on Tuesday. If you haven't watched it, please go ahead and, and, and watch this. We talked to Romeo Dersher from Oterian, and we talked about the future of using drones in the public safety world. And... Um, and there were a lot of uh, really good clips that we got from this interview with Romeo. And I think one of them really stood out and uh, where Romeo actually talks about how the, the, the death of the SD card is imminent in some drone use. And I'm not going to say much more than this, but uh, this was a statement that he made that actually got a lot of people talking. So if you want to know what I'm talking about, head over to the Pixel Drone Show channel and then you'll be able to see it. Or you can actually find it. It's a podcast. So if you're listening in your car, you can basically go listen to this thing uh, in your car and uh, on your way to work. It's about an hour long. And we also have the airplane news update. This week, we're talking about an uh, electric aircraft. Uh, it's called the Bi Aerospace E Flyer 800. And this is an eight seater aircraft that is going to carry a whole bunch of people. It looks really, really cool. So uh, if you want more information on this, head over 
to our airplane channel, uh, we have uh, an unlicensed pilot that's going to get jailed because, well, I can't even, <laughs> I can't even begin to describe what this guy did and how dumb it was. And uh, so make sure you head over to watch this. Uh, Airbus is looking at doing laser terminals. And then we have a tilt rotor man aircraft, uh, not for drone deliveries, but for other things. So again, if you want to see this, uh, head over to the airplane channel. And that's all I have. Like, subscribe, comment, do what you do. And I'll see you guys next week. Thank you.